March 5th, um, and that's due to this morning's inclement weather, but we hope that you will take some time out um, to come back and visit us for that because there's some great things that we found in our archives and um, over the years uh, that we have collected all the things that we have done that has gotten us to this day. So please do um, come out to that if you can. We invite you to take pictures today. Um, to use our backdrop later, um, if you're going to be with us for our main celebration, just uh, please be mindful to ask anyone uh, that you photograph beforehand. Um, and also, we invite you to use our hashtag, um, hashtag Mosaic 15th, on your Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook accounts. So, thank you. Um, another thing to note, we are being recorded today. so. Um, if you do not wish to be on video, please do raise your hand at this time. Okay. Well then, John, our wonderful videographer who is with us um, today from uh, new our new media studio here at UMBC uh, will be taping us. Um, and so uh, just know that that's happening. We also have Marlena, who is our wonderful UMBC photographer, is here to help us record our event today, too. So thank you both for being with us. Thank you. All right. So over the, over the past 15 years, um, the work of Campus Life's Mosaic Center for Culture and Diversity has grown and evolved with the changing tides on campus in Maryland, our nation, and across the globe. This special space was co-created on February 2nd, 2004 by students, staff, and faculty out of a love, conviction, and desire for UMBC to have a space that visibly supports its values of cultural diversity. Since then, the Mosaic's work has expanded to encompass its two sister spaces, Campus Life's Interfaith Center and Campus Life's Queer Student Lab. In 2019, we continue to provide these supportive spaces for students as we expand and advocate for social justice-infused education, intersectionality-based equity, and inclusion for all. This afternoon's panel and roundtable discussion event, honoring our history, the Mosaic's past meets present, gives us all an opportunity to reflect with those who've shaped the Mosaic and our sister spaces over the past 15 years while learning about our current work and future hopes. So with that, we welcome you again. Um, on behalf of Aaron Waddles, our coordinator for student diversity and inclusion, and Carlos Tercios, who you will see a little later, our other coordinator for student diversity and inclusion, thank you so much for being here. I also want to recognize our Mosaic interns. Tirza and Sophia are here helping us today, and you'll see a number of them a little bit later as we move towards our main celebration. So now I'd like to introduce our panel um, and also our roundtable captains who are going to be helping us do our roundtable discussions a little bit later. So first I will start with our panel. Our moderator for our panel is Mr. Michael Hunt, 
his pronouns are he, him, and he uh, had a role, a number of roles with us as a former Mosaic cultural peer and student co-founder of the Mosaic and Interfaith Centers. He currently serves as UMBC's Assistant Director of the McNair Scholars Program. Next to Michael, we have Hamza Khan. His pronouns are he, him. His role is uh, a former Mosaic cultural peer, and he was also, uh, or is also, the founder of the Pluralism Project. Yes. Yes. Next to uh, Hamza is Dr. Bev Bickle. Um, her pronouns are she, her. And uh, she is formerly the director of our Language Literacy and Culture Program and current faculty mm -hmm. in Language Literacy and Culture. Mm -hmm. And also uh, formerly was on the Campus Committee for Culture and Diversity, our first I'm faculty staff partner right? group that helped us to do work in the Mosaic Center. Mm -hmm. Next to um, Dr. Bickle is Sylvia Anokan. Uh, Sylvia, her pronouns are she, her. And she is currently the Mosaic intern for Black Africana Student Engagement. Her anticipated graduation year is 2020. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and then next to Sylvia is Jonathan Law. Uh, pronouns they, them. He, him. He, him. Mm -hmm. You'd probably be okay with they, them as well. Perhaps, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, this is what we do when we have not found out in advance <laughs> what the pronouns are. They, them just so you know is a default mm -hmm. a little bit um, for many people. Um, so Jonathan's uh, role is former Mosaic student leader and campus partner and co-founder of QMBC, mm -hmm. Queers United and Mobilizing for Change, a student organization, LGBTQ plus related, that um, actually came right after Freedom Alliance um, mm -hmm. and then preceded our current LGBTQ student union. So. Jonathan, thank you for being with us. All mm -hmm. of you, thank you for um, your time. Um, and Jonathan, can you share your current title with us, please? Uh, yeah, I'm a program and advancement officer at uh, Project I Can slash Cups Coffee House. Excellent, thank you for that. All right, so now to our table captain. And I'm gonna just say your name. You're all seated in various locations across the room. So if you could raise your hand or stand if you're comfortable, that would be wonderful. Um, Mr. William Bill Joyner, pronouns he, him, his. His graduation <coughs> year is 2011. And his role at UMBC was co-leader of UMBC along with Jonathan Law. Um, his current title is Senior Economic Inclusion Specialist at the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Hi. Let us know where you are, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Bill, I'm sorry. Um, Dana Cobrin, um, pronouns she, her, hers, uh, graduated in 2018 and is currently um, AmeriCorps VISTA yeah. with the University at Shady's Grove. Shady Grove. Okay. University is at Shady Grove. Right? Um, and Dana also is a former Hillel intern and uh, RA here on campus and a strong student leader campus partner to us. Thank you. Stephanie Mavronis, pronoun she, her. Um, Stephanie graduated in 2012 um, and is a former SEB president uh, as well as <laughs> that's our student events board. Um, used to work for Common Vision at one point to do some wonderful design work and is a strong former student leader partner to us. Um, Stephanie is currently the director of civic engagement for the Baltimore City Council District 1, working with Councilman Zeke Cohen. Mm -hmm. All right. So, moving right along here. Um, Sophia Thompson. Sophia. Uh, her pronouns are she. Um, her graduation year was 2015, and um, she is the former president of our Africana Student Union, and then also um, is currently a publicist and founder of. <laughs> I couldn't make out what you wrote. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, she's founder of all fabulous things. That's what she <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. So, Sean Bediaco, Dr. Sean Bediaco, um, is, uh, has pronouns uh, he, him, his, um, did not graduate from UMBC, um, but is a faculty member here in our Department of Psych and is a long-term faculty partner of the Mosaic Center. Um, Jess Myers, um, pronouns she, her, hers, 
did not also graduate from UMBC, but is the director of my I'm with you. That's right. <laughs> UMC has a way of doing that, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Jess is uh, currently our director of the Women's Center, and the Women's Center, as many of you know, is our closest campus partner in this work, and we are so grateful for them. Um, thank you, as well as Amelia, for being here. Um, Jill Barr, pronouns she for hers. Um, Jill is currently the senior assistant dean of our graduate school. And again, a very close faculty partner to us, has served in a number of ways with us, uh, currently as a member of our LGBTQ campus climate group. And on all kinds of things that we ask her to do, she is uh, <laughs> what I would consider to be a ride or die <laughs> staff partner. So thank you so much, Jill. Um, not that the rest of you aren't. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Jill Levin Manning. Joe, pronouns he, him, his. Um, Joe is our former graduate coordinator for LGBTQ plus programs um, and also a former um, religious council member that worked with Hillel before that so and uh, still stays connected to us and we would not be where we are without some of the good work that Joe has done so thank you. Um, Jane Wachu, pronouns he him his, graduated in 2003 and is a former student leader in a number of different ways, um, mostly with our Black Student Union and other groups on campus, but was really instrumental in helping us to found the Mosaic Center. So we're very grateful for Jay for being here. So thank you so much. And uh, I believe that's all of our roundtable captains. Nope. I'm sorry, Mickey. Mickey. Yes, yes, yes. So hold on a moment, Mickey. I'm going to make sure I get all your information right. I placed it in a place that I should not have, so <laughs> bear with me, y'all. <laughs> Mickey, I misplaced your information. Okay, okay. I apologize. Sure. So, Mickey Aurora um, Irizarry, yeah. <laughs> Aurora is your maiden name, um, is a close former campus partner to us, um, has worked here uh, previously uh, in UHS, and I will let her take it from there. Mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, I worked at UHS from 2008 to 2016, um, and I got my master's from UMBC in 2012. Um, we're currently at American University as their Director of Health Promotion and Advocacy Center. Great. Yes. Thank you, Mickey. And I apologize for this information. Um, one other fun fact about Mickey is that she helped me, uh, along with Donnelly Mahabir and Dr. Alexis Melville, to co-found the uh, Student Affairs Staff of Color Network um, that was another partner to the Mosaic Center's work. So thank you, Mickey, for that. We really appreciate you. Um, so with that, now we will um, have our panel uh, begin, and I'm going to hand it over to Michael to do that, and then we will move forward. Um, before I have that happen, actually, there's one other quick thing. Um, we will do the panel, and then we will start with our box lunches. So just please note that, OK? Oh. We will feed you. The <laughs> <laughs> Only. That's right. You got to listen to us first. Um, we'll be quick. We'll be quick. We'll be quick. Yes, let me first say, um, as Lisa was introducing, there are some powerful folks up in this place. And so we are grateful um, for the continued support of alums um, and faculty and staff on campus and those who've, who've returned. So can y'all just give a round of applause for everybody who is in this space with us today. This is phenomenal. Um, as um, Bev and I were just talking before we got started, we were thinking about the very beginning of this. And uh, we were going through, flipping through the book and seeing the growth of the staff and um, the mission and the programs. There was one set of programs that we had when we were first getting going was called, and we found the name, it was UMBC Talks. And that's right. what we started with back in 2005 yeah. or so. And now you look at the book and you see the many programs. And so um, I do want to give another shout out to the staff 
um, who are even now continuing the work here at Mosaic. And so let's thank them and show them all. All right. Part of what we're doing today is, is connecting with the past um, and remembering that so that we can continue with the future and what is to come. And so first I'm going to ask each of um, our panelists to sort of share um, their connection with Mosaic. Um, and then um, what, what keeps them remaining connected? Um, and so one is how did you originally get connected? And then two, how have you remained connected? Um, and what's the important value of the mosaic to you today? So we'll start here and work our way down and then I'll come back with my next question. So clearly I'm in the hot seat. Um, Good, what is, it to, what is it now, afternoon? So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hamza Khan again. I'm actually currently a student at UMBC. I've come back after a 10-year hiatus to finish my undergraduate. Please don't judge me. It wasn't UMBC's fault at all. <laughs> um, I've been busy doing all kinds of very interesting things, all that related back to the Mosaic Center and my involvement on campus with the multicultural uh, space. And I got involved in the Mosaic Center because I had to pray several times a day at the Interfaith Center, which I don't know if it's still governed by Mosaic, by that same office, but at that time it was. Uh, and in that interaction, I became close with the director of Hillel at that time, Amos Levy, uh, and I built a relationship with the Jewish community while also being involved in the Muslim community and somehow being dragged into our very tiny but active Zoroastrian community. And next thing I knew, I was on the board for the Af African Student Union and so on and so forth. Uh, to so, say the least, I, I really got involved on campus when it came to being a part of our multicultural uh, communities. And. Uh, what was interesting from that is that I was asked to come and work at the Mosaic Center, and I did that from 2006 to, I think, 2007, 2008. Uh, it's been a couple of years, so forgive me if I can't recall. Uh, but what was amazing was at that time, to just lay this out for you, on the board of the Jewish Student Union and Hillel, we had two Iranian-American Jews, one Italian-American Jew, I recall an Ethiopian-American Jew, an Indian-American Jew, two Jews who had ties to Iraq and Pakistan, uh, and then for whatever reason you had me. Uh, and I'm a, I am a Pashtun Pakistani American who is a five-time a day Sunni Muslim. So that was what we were dealing with in the Jewish community. In the Muslim community, we had just as much diversity, Egyptian Americans, Ethiopian Americans, Turkish Americans, Sunni Shia coming together. It really recalls something, one of my favorite lines from the Quran is, verily we created you from one soul into many nations and tribes, so that you might come to know one another. UMBC was quite literally fulfilling this divine providence, this pro prophecy, excuse me, from God um, for me. And that was one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. Uh, on top of that, I come from the best county in America, Montgomery <laughs> County, <laughs> you know, rock on. Four, well, let me point out why. Four out of the top 10 diverse cities in America are in Montgomery County. 51.2% of the population is not white. One in three of us are born in a foreign country. One in seven of us still have an immigrant background, meaning like you're actually still an immigrant. And on top of all of that, we're one of the top 10 counties for income and education in the world, um, or rather in the country. And then in comparison to Tel Aviv, Israel, we have one of the most numbers of PhDs in the world. And all of that is partially because of UMBC. As I understand, Montgomery County is now the top feeder county into UMBC. Mm -hmm. so, Coming from that background and coming here to enjoy all that together and to see those communities interact and ideas flash across a pan, like a, fi like a, a fire in a pan, happening really quickly. And with that, all these amazing things, all these amazing connections and these life-changing experiences. For me, that was the most beautiful thing about uh, UMBC. And I often describe the, the campus as a mosaic, mm -hmm. uh, borrowing it from the name of the center, uh, is that this campus really is a mosaic. And if we get things moving in the right direction, it can be a world player. And then I'll stop because Mike wants me to. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That's great. Um, so hi, everyone. I uh, first was working with the mosaic, or our idea of the mosaic, as the director of the English Language Center, which is now the English Language Institute. And my concern was exactly what Hamza just talked about. We had these many tribes and nations on this campus. And I was responsible for the well-being of many international students, uh, a lot of immigrant students who I felt like they 
brought so much richness to the discussions on campus, but also needed the opportunity to get to meet people and to join in the UMBC talks and to have a chance to just find out what people were thinking about from all these different perspectives, the different knowledges that people brought to our tables of conversation. So um, that's how I started here. And I remember, um, Lisa, in those early, early discussions, some of the complex thinking that we were doing at the time about that was going beyond the, well, diversity is beautiful and of course we're all better for it. We were really trying to think about well, what does it mean to say that diversity is in this one place, right? And what does it mean to say this is a campus that's committed to diversity, but it's kind of centered here. And so I, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about some of the work of Sarah Ahmed, who's going to be on campus mm -hmm. um, on February 19th at 7 o'clock. And her talk is about diversity complaint as diversity work. And some of where that's coming from is her thinking about diversity within institutions and how institutions claim it, embrace it, enclose it, define it, uh, describe it into one or two people's jobs. And so because what she's talking about there is she's talking about how the creation and presence of diversity centers and diversity leaders, which is describing everybody in this room, um, can sometimes, and this is now quoting her, represent the absence of wider support for diversity. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the challenge and the complexity that we were trying to grapple with 15 years ago. And as I was thinking about where the mosaic is now, I realized but the people now associated with the Mosaic Center, Lisa Gray and especially, um, have always understood the critical work of diversity as a calling of people in, of an engaging the different conversations about difference, so as to share the responsibility broadly across the campus, uh, so that all of us are feeling that responsibility and feeling equipped to take on that responsibility of um, enacting equity, of learning how to live justly with each other, and of bringing to our, uh, all of our tables the uh, multiple knowledges and life experiences that we come to this campus with. Mm. So, I'll stop. Thank you. My name is Sylvia, and I found the Mosaic around right after the 2016 presidential election. And I just walked in, I was like, what is this space? Yes. And we were having like one of those difficult discussions on what just happened and like what's our experiences around this. And I kind of, I felt really comfortable there. It was really nice to have all these different people with different identities and we're just talking about our experiences and how this could affect us. And it made me continue to go to Mosaic. I went there every single day afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't have class, I was in the Mosaic. And <laughs> I attended almost all their events and helped out with a lot of their events. And then one day, Carlos offered me a job and I was like, yes, I love this. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> and um, so I started working as the Mosaic ambassador in January 3rd, 2018. Remember exactly when I started. and. Um, it was nice because we talk a lot about various identities and other people's like different identities and like how it intersects in their life. And for a long time, I never really thought about my own identity and all the different inter intersectionalities about it. And there's there was a lot of different identities in my life that I never really ever reflected on until mm -hmm. I started working the mosaic. And I took that chance to really reflect on who I am what are my passions, what are like my goals, what do I want to do in the future. And I actually always tell the story, but Mosaic kind of changed my major in a way. Because when I first started working Mosaic, I was a biolog biology major, and I was trying to be a doctor, and I'm really afraid of blood, so it kind <laughs> of didn't make sense to me. <laughs> but um, after working Mosaic, I, kind of, I realized that I had a huge passion for social justice, social advocacy, and really enjoyed reflecting on my identities, like especially immigrants, but then my blackness and how that's, how I could work with that in the future and how I could help other people with those identities. Mm -hmm. 
and made me become a women's studies major because I started taking classes and like really learned about various identities. And now I'm like I'm pursuing a law degree that's I want to be a lawyer in the future. But I kind of took a whole 360 in what I want to do because for the first time I actually did something I normally wouldn't do, but then also reflected on things I never really thought mm -hmm. about in a long time. Right. And that's how I discovered Mosaic, and that's why I continue to stay in Mosaic, because I really love the work that I do. And I don't think I ever want to do anything else but work like this. Cool. Thank you. Uh, my name is John. Uh, I... When I, when, I uh, when I tell people about UMBC, uh, there are two things I normally say. One is um, you, you get out what you put in at, uh, at UMBC. Uh, and I will say that because mm -hmm. my first few years at UMBC, I was not involved at all. I just went to class, I hung out with friends, and that was it. Uh, so for me, the McZay Center, I don't think I knew the name Mosaic Center. Uh, <laughs> and there were just like diversity events that I did not go to. Um, and I have, I knew people slash I know people who would describe UMBC as like just a parking lot, <laughs> uh, on a hill. Uh, and I never would have agreed with that, but I could see where they were coming from at that time. Uh, and it was only when I met Bill Joyner, uh, and we started talking about, for example, uh, one of the ways I did not get involved was I went to a couple meetings of the Freedom Alliance and I didn't feel like it was for me, uh, so I did not be, did not, so I did not stay involved. Um, but talking to Bill, we uh, we kind of th discovered like we were both interested in LGBTQ advocacy and service and how we wanted to do more of that type of activity. And I guess I never really thought to like actually pursue that and make it a thing. Um, and it's in that process of actually starting an organization and doing things on campus, I started discovering like the depths of what is at UMBC and the depths of like what the Mosaic Center and what Lisa Gray was doing. Um, excuse me. Uh, and yeah, just learning like the potential for like student action and advocacy and just ownership here at UMBC is incredibly unique. I would say like yeah. just how much the structures of the school is set up to help students do things, uh, just do anything, uh, is different from a lot of other universities. Uh, like what, for example, when I went to, went to graduate school uh, you know, at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, uh, there were a lot of structures that were in place to block student activism. Uh, and they would say like, oh, this is just how things are, or this is how Maryland law requires. And we'd be like, it's not, because we went to UMBC, so we know no. what Maryland <laughs> law does allow. Uh, and yeah, so I really, and the second thing I say about UMBC is, um, when I studied abroad, uh, I took a lot of sociology classes in Scotland, and that taught me to be like a communist. Uh, but going here, UMBC taught me to be like a little D Democrat, oh, like how to work to build our communities with each other. Um, so yeah. So um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this with one sentence from each of you with this question in mind. Um, it's been 15 years since <coughs> the beginning of the cultural center and. Um, we got another 50 or so to go. The question then remains for us, where, what's the hopes and dreams for this space? Whether the Mosaic Center or our sister spaces, the Interfaith Center, um, the Queer Student Lounge, um, what do you see the vision of this? And don't, you know, we'll, we'll need a dissertation, but just a sentence or two to sort of give <laughs> us something that the tables then, because our hope is that this will spark further conversation with the tables to be able to say, how do we get there? Mm -hmm. um, and so what, what are some things on your mind? Like, man, we, this is where we need to be. Starting with me? Yes. Nope. Okay, so no dissertation. Um, 
we, I mean, I would hope the Mosaic Center will create global leaders uh, who will do amazing things in politics and civic activism, both locally and across the world, because this is the only campus in America that has that potential. That's my mm -hmm. thought. So I'll add that I hope the Mosaic Center will continue to develop the leaders that have, here you are, uh, who can continue to guide this campus so that everyone on this campus understands, embraces, and works for the small d behaviors and agencies and civic engagements and the attention to equity and justice for everybody, everybody who is involved in this campus. I hope for the center currently first to also expand and get big but also to make other people more aware of we're here, we're open to listen to anyone, whatever issues you want to discuss, bring to the forefront. We're a space where you can feel comfortable to do mm -hmm. so. And we have increased with the amount of people who are aware of us, but I'm hoping to see that grow even more mm -hmm. to make it more of like a campus-wide acknowledgement that we are present and having more great um, partners um, on campus as well. Uh, I'm coming coming from a very biased uh, standpoint. Uh, I would love to see the Music Center and the UMBC find more ways to connect with Baltimore County and Baltimore City. I think, mm -hmm. for example, even the fact that there's a city and a county, there's a lot of racism behind that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there are there's a lot of potential in ways to like address like. Mm -hmm. racism and racial equity in the Baltimore area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's give them a round of applause. Please. Thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. And they're going to join, we're, we're all going to join you for, for further conversations. What we're going to ask in this moment is that um, um, Lisa is pointing to the food and so what we want you to do is get food come back to your table um, and then your uh, and then a continue the discussion for about 20 minutes and then at the end of the 20 minutes we're asking the table leaders um, and on um, one table leader um, to sort of just stand up and share with us um, one sort of nugget that um, sort of came out of your group or what was the main conversation that you sort of um, uh, talked about in your group after hearing from the panel and sharing maybe the questions that uh, were given to the um, to the table captains. We also have boards here, um, and we're asking you know if you would use the boards and you know maybe put some of those things there so that uh, we can actually take this information back um, to continue this work because again, as you heard what the panelists just shared, um, some of the goals and things that they, they've talked about, this ain't gonna happen tomorrow. Um, it takes work and it takes us all working together. And so our hope is that you will share in the load. And so giving us the ideas and things to help us move the agenda. All right, so we'll take a moment for everyone to get lunch and then we'll move into our table discussions. Thank you again, panelists. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so. What we're going to ask each each person to do, or somebody from each group, just do a popcorn, and um, we'll, we'll we'll start with one, or let's we'll take a one. This is one, two. We're just going to go zigzag, up and down, um, to just someone um, from the group to rise and just give us a one statement sentence on what you all shared, and then make sure. I know some people haven't written up yet, but please write something up there. Um, it could be the summary that you give the group noun or some other key points that were important to the conversation. So, do you mind if we start here? I thought you said, I like you talk at the table, not get up and talk. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to go to what was written. I'll cheat. Uh, UMBC becomes known for training graduate and graduating globally conscious leaders. Some of the things that informed that was UMBC has always been known for having great diversity. 
Ulysses really they know, and it's gotten better over time to making sure that people actually have an opportunity to engage each other across those lines of diversity. What does that really mean, no matter what your chosen profession or walk of life is, to make sure that you take those experiences into the next chapter of your life and be more globally conscious leaders? And it was mentioned at the table, and we kind of just went a little deeper on that. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right, table two. Who wants to share? Oh, you gotta go. Okay. Somebody want to share? Do you want to share the? Okay. So this is the thing that we wrote, which is mosaic calls people in, motivates consciousness for going out. So a lot of times we call out, which is we put blame. Why aren't you doing this right? Why don't you understand? Why don't you be PC? But you don't realize that that's not helpful. That just antagonizes people, makes them more aggressive, and makes them less likely to listen to you. So we like that mosaic calls people in because we're not going to force you to come. We're not going to grab you by the hand and make you come. But if you have all these interesting ideas and questions, this is the thing we're talking about saying go with allyship, whether you are a member of a certain group that needs support, or if you're not, you both need support. If you're in the group that feels like they need something, then you come to the Mosaic Center. But if you're not in one of those groups, understand it. Perspective take. Try to think in their mind and kind of see, well, what can I do to support with my identities? If I cannot personally relate, I can listen to their experience. So we want to call both different groups in to talk to each other. Right, awesome. Thank you. And then we'll go here. Um, so we discussed some of the various roles that a place like the Mosaic Center plays on campus. Um, and so some of those things were you know, it's one of those key spaces that keeps critical conversations moving on campus, as well as supporting them when necessary, um, and and doing that in a responsible way, kind of bringing them out in the open. Um, we also discussed how it plays a lot of roles both for students and staff. It's both a resource in in times of crisis and those big moments when a response is needed. Um, but it's also a training ground. I remember when I was a student being a part of different kind of training programs um, through the Mosaic Center. But it's also a space to sort of celebrate our, our difference and a space to celebrate who we are, explore who we are in some cases. Um, and it's also a place where inclusion and education is really possible through our interaction. So, yeah. Thank you. Right up there yet, but uh, and I will. Um, so our small table of current and former staff members really talked about resources um, and how there have been so many great comments shared throughout this room so far today about our visions for the Mosaic Center and where it could go. But that can't happen without proper resourcing um, and funding. And so um, it's you know small but mighty of a team right now. And imagine what they could do if they were fully if they were actually fully equipped to do the work that they have been tasked with doing. Um, how far we could go at the university, at, in the Baltimore area, and in the Indiana. I should write that down. Right yeah. <laughs> we also talked about just, um, you know, with the number of years of experience that we have had here, our lack of knowledge still with some of the different services. And so I had commented to Joe about, besides knowing Joe, I knew nothing about the Interfaith Center. Um, and as a student affairs employee, I probably should have, right? So, but so I'm wondering, like, if if that was my experience, um, and same with Amelia's, then you know, what was Joe's experience for other services that came out of the Mosaic Center? Uh, and if we knew one part, how could we get to know all three? Um, the Queer Student Lounge is not that old; um, it only formed a few years ago, and so. Um, are, stu are people on campus, students, faculty, staff, aware, fully aware of the resources that are available through the Mosaic Center, and how do we get the word out better uh, to different campus um, partners? Awesome. So, mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so table five, um, we talked a lot about, um, kind of, it's what's up in some conversations, but really about that idea that it's a space to foster safety, uh, support, and really what I, we didn't, I don't know if we said the word, but really this wholeness, and that we don't exist just in the classroom, we don't just exist in a student organization, but that we have many different pieces of who we are, and that when we're thinking about our identities and our cultural experiences and diversity, it allows us to really be whole and to integrate what we're learning in the classroom really to like our experiences. We both talked about, um, well, we both, two of us, um, talked about really the experiences of being in two different college campuses, 
um, during um, the death of Mike Brown and the death of Freddie Gray, and how cultural centers can hold that space in acknowledging that life happens outside of the campus bubble, and that um, places like the Mosaic do a good job of calling that in again about saying that this, these realities are still a part of our life, and how do we continue learning and growing and doing research in the context of um, terrible things that are happening in our world. We talk a little bit about that. Thank you. All right, so table five is who we're Sorry. very much in sync, yes. which is funny because uh, we didn't discuss with them, but oh, cool. we spoke a lot about how inclusivity can go beyond spaces like the Mosaic Center into the real world, um, especially concerning career life. Um, and we spoke about how in order to move inclusivity forward, it's really important for leaders to be unafraid about having open dialogue that maybe people would have secretly or would have in their homes. Um, and we thought that that's important based on just understanding growth, that typically if you discuss something within your own groups, um, you won't have that same scope as you would with someone from a different group. Um, and then as a former student, I shared an example of what happened um, when I was a student worker at the grad school. So um, during the Freddie Gray situation, Jill, I'm gonna put you out there in a good way. Um, Jill was very, I thought like, displayed excellent leadership um, because she called a meeting like for students and faculty underneath the graduate school and we were able to like openly talk about it and discuss how we would make a difference on campus and in general concerning this issue of, of police brutality and so it'll be examples like that where you are allowing there to be a safe space beyond maybe a university or a vacuum environment awesome. Yeah. Awesome. come on y'all give each other a round of applause thank you, thank you. Thank you. so before i turn it over to lisa or to aaron um I, I do want to ask you if there's anything else that pops up for you before you leave to write it down or just make a little note on there um, for, for the mosaic, but also for us um, as a former student, a, a worker at, of um, the mosaic as well as an alum of UMBC and now a um, member of the staff and now in the PhD program, I'm always, if somebody said it, UMBC always calls you back, right? You, you're always drawn back. And then it's a testament to that. I've definitely seen the growth of where Mosaic has come from, but also the dream, the vision of where it can be is just like, I mean, this room speaks of that. This room shows that um, um, there's so much more work for us to do and we're grateful for where we, where we have come from, um, but we all have work to continue. So thank you again, and um, I'm gonna turn it over to Aaron. My name is Carlos Tercios. Uh, I use he and his pronouns, and I'm the other coordinator for student diversity and inclusion. Catching my breath right now. Um, so, next door, we actually have an art project uh, that we decided to kind of put together as to kind of commemorate this moment and to really um, evoke the messages that we like try to um, send as a center and like how we kind of do our work together, which is through partnerships and um, as a collective. So uh, we do have this art piece later on uh, in the evening. I know that we're running short on time. For, so if you will not be able to make it for our evening event, I welcome you to the right next door. Um, we have a tile art piece that we're doing together to create basically our own mosaic together. And um, you might notice that some of the tiles are all broken and uh, have really rough edges. And we hope that kind of represents uh, like the rough edges that we have as we're kind of developing our own identities and knowing to know more about ourselves and as well as our communities. So uh, there is a map board there as well. If you are an alum, please uh, go ahead and write the graduation year along with your name on the map board. Um, 
And then there are hot glue guns to place the, uh, the actual tiles. They will be grouted later, um, once completed. And then in the end, we'll have it all put together and hung in the, uh, in the commons as an art piece, along with uh, 15, uh, 15 like promises, uh, values, aspirations that we have as a center and as a staff uh, to kind of like, you know, be mindful of where we are. <coughs> in this moment and then where we see ourselves going into the future. So uh, for those that will not be returning uh, for the evening event, please uh, feel free to go next door. We have some volunteers that have been setting up. Um, and you, if you want the full uh, description of the, the art project, it is on page 24 of your program. So thank you. remind you that you can your black holders or your yellow holder if you're one of our panelists and roundtable captains. Um, we have our evaluation form. Um, we take your feedback very seriously and we honestly try to use it to guide our work um, as you know, we go over time. I want to thank you to our panelists, Sylvia Imogen, Ben Pickle, John Law, and Hamid Khan um, for sharing your stories with us and um, your wisdom and insight. I'd also like to thank um, Michael Hunt, our moderator, um, who is also a founding mosaic cultural peer and helped to create the interface. Um, and last but not least, I want to thank all of you um, for not only attending but doing the work of engaging deeply um, with our panelists and each other and taking um, the time to really honor our history today. Um, your presence and insight are invaluable and appreciated. Um, and as we're talking about presence, I kind of want to segue a little bit into talking about the resource of presence and partnerships. Um, and as well as the very real need of cultivating kind of some fiscal resources so that we can continue to do this work. Uh, we're super, super, super excited to announce the fact that we have launched our Grit Starter um, mm -hmm. called Funds for Diversity and Inclusion Initiatives. Those funds are going to be used to support programs, outreach, and initiatives for traditionally marginalized populations. Um, and the website to get to that, um, I can pull it up, but it's gritstarter.umbc.edu. <laughs> Slash within 15, that is. You can put up here. The big reveal is coming. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Woo! Okay. All right. So currently, we have a target of five thousand dollars, and I'm anticipating that we will fully reach that goal. <laughs> um, we have 56 days left, we just started it. Um, but if you go on the website, you can read a little bit more about the work that we've been doing and how we're hoping to use these funds. Um, I think that Carl and Lisa and myself and our students are doing everything that we can. But the resources that we have to, to work better on behalf of our students, staff, faculty, um, and new alumni as well, um, that just helps so much. So please take a look at that. And again, thank you so much for coming out. Again, our evening celebration is going to be at 5 30. We have some good food, I know, because I ordered it. Um, <laughs> and we're just going to take that time to really celebrate the work that has happened and that we could not do without you all. So please come to that event. If you can't make it, we have a video and pictures that we'll post. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. Can I, um, before, um, if I can give four other people, I want to do $100 to get this going. And if we can end this with getting a, at least a five hundred dollars before we go tonight, that would be awesome. Okay. And so we got I'm three, in. four. I need at least one more. Come on, come on, come on! Don't, don't let me put my preacher hat on. <laughs> <laughs> so a group, let, a group can get together. Group get together, right? Get a group. If you need four or four people, but all right, we have four hundred, so we'll make sure we're going to get to the five. What are you doing? Before we all leave, we have some gifts um, for all of you at your round tables. Please That's take nice. one of the coffee mugs. That's a gift and thank you to all of you. Um, and for our panelists, we have a special goodie bag for all of you. Thank you for helping us out as panel. And uh, we so appreciate you all.
Oh. Oh. We're getting fancy now. Oh. Oh. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So. Oh. We could not do this work without your partnership uh, and your presence and your good energy um, and all of the talents and skills that you all have brought to us over the years. Thank you so, so much. Um, and with that, um, we uh, conclude our panel and roundtable event. Uh, we hope to see you at tonight's um, celebration if you can be here or next door at our um, Mosaic uh, Commemorative Art Project if you have some time to, to give to that. Um, and we have some extra food if you have some folks that you love in your life, and I hope all of you do have some <laughs> loved ones. <Or> Please <laughs> take <laughs> some extra food to a loved one on your way out. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> oh, awesome. So that was five? Yep, that's the five. Hey, we made the five. We got the five. <laughs>